Hello everybody and welcome to a video on Evicron Legacy. Um, I just got this a few days ago, it only came out. Um, it's kind of uh, the follow-up game to Evicron Mercenary, which I did have. Um, didn't play too much of it, um, but I did like like it when I did uh, play it. I just didn't have the time really to put into it uh, too much. But um, I've decided um, to give this one a go and it's really quite good. Um, I've been playing it now... Uh, well, let's see how long I've been playing. It tells you over here uh, on my main profile here. Um, I've got about eight hours, eight and a half hours um, into it so far. And um, this is basically the, the profile screen. You can have up to 100 different profiles. Um, so this is my main single player profile that I'm using here. I think you can jump in and out of multiplayer and single player using the same profile as far as I know. Um, you get some tips here. Uh, you can create a pilot down here if you want to. Um, pilot statistics. This gives you how much money and stuff you have. And you can actually have a look at your loadout and things like that from this screen as well. So, so what we'll do is we'll jump into our main profile and give this a go. Okay, so this is uh, the, the launch screen. Um, on the left over here, you have the option to do training. There's about um, uh, two hours worth of training, maybe uh, about that anyway. Um, and it's quite in depth, and it's in depth, but it doesn't even cover everything there is to the game. But uh, definitely worth doing that first if you haven't uh, played the game. Uh, down here we have launch. Uh, this is pretty much to launch into the single player game and this brings you back to the pilot manager then you've got the options and exit and over here is if you want to play multiplayer uh, you click on this button here and it brings up a, a list of servers um, I'll just do that now I haven't and you can click one of these uh, and join now I haven't really played uh, multiplayer at all really um, but I've seen some people playing it uh, in videos and it looks good fun so maybe if you have some friends or something you can do co-op with them uh, and that would be really good but for me for the most part I've been playing the single player mode and let's get straight into it then so if you click launch well before we do that let's have a look at the options um, I'm just going to lower down the music a bit more because I'm not sure what kind of volume that's coming out of um, you get your resolution, uh, your graphics details. I have this cranked fairly high, um, on pretty much max, I'd say, except maybe the anti-aliasing. And uh, I've got a pretty much a low to medium spec PC, and it runs brilliantly. So you don't need um, uh, state-of-the-art uh, specs to play this, or you know, uh, pretty much most people should be able to play, which is really good. Um, some of the newer titles, you know. I'd imagine uh, you'd need some beefy graphics card and stuff like that to play them with, but with this you should be fine. Um, audio controls, different control types, and all that stuff. Okay, so let's save that, and now let's click launch uh, to launch into the game. Now, so when you click launch, um, the um, ship kind of boots up, powers up, and gets ready to go. It's kind of the loading sequence, which is pretty cool. And it takes about, for me anyway, about a minute to load, maybe. It'd be pretty cool if you could um, look around um, during this sequence. Uh, have a kind of a mouse free look just to have a look around the inside of the station that'd be pretty cool but um, as far as I know you can't do that okay so nearly powered up and ready to go
Okay, good to go. So, um, it's pretty much loading the last place where I saved, um, which is at a station. Usually it'll save at a station. Um, although it is possible to save um, out in space and stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot to this game. So, if you're looking for a... Um, if you're looking for um, a flight, or sorry, a space sim game, um, kind of like um, a fighter pilot, mercenary, uh, elite type of game, um, this is pretty much, I would say, one of the best out there. Um, and there's a lot to it. So, let's, so what we're doing here, we're actually in the station at the moment. And from the station you can look at what they have to sell. You got goods that you can uh, transport and make money. Um, you've got items down here. Um, different ships can have um, different amounts of item slots. You can upgrade your ship and stuff like that. And you can fit it out with uh, different drives, scanners, um, repair systems, ba uh, shield batteries. All that sort of stuff. Then down here in the green, we've got weapons and missiles that you can purchase. Um, I've got two missiles here at the moment. Um, they're um, disposable, so once you use them, you're gonna have to buy more uh, replacement missiles. And then you've got your primary this weapons here, which are um, a kind of a cannon weapon and a beam weapon. Beam weapon is useful for taking down enemy shields, and the cannon weapon is just use useful for dishing out the damage. Um, so that is most of what's here. You can also click on available contracts and you can accept different things like races, uh, which I find kind of difficult. I, I haven't been doing many races because they're quite tricky. Um, you need to be pretty good at your flight controls uh, and uh, turning at speed to do them. Uh, but they are good fun. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, solar array needs clean. This is a simple mission to do and um, you can definitely make some good credits doing that um, It's kind of like a it's a bit of a boring mission though, but it's it, it's good if you're stuck for uh, Something else to do So we could do this mission actually. Let's accept this mission and We now have that um, That's our current contract we do that we're gonna get 8,000 credits at the moment I've got 57,000 credits. Um, you can also enter the station. You click on this button. Um, you've got engineering lab and weapon lab, which I haven't delved into too much, but basically you can create your own custom weapons and uh, systems as far as I know. Uh, the shipyard is pretty much where you can configure your ship. So you can click into frame config here, and you can um, choose whether you want say you want more cargo bays you can click on cargo bays and if um, or maybe you don't want cargo bays so you could sacrifice a few of those points and put them into other things like perhaps equipment hard points which allows you to carry more equipment so as far as I know you can you can freely come in and out of this and customize this and it doesn't I don't know if it costs, it might cost but it doesn't cost a lot of it does um, but yeah you can pretty much set up the ship the way you want it uh, usually when you start out you have three free points and you can put them wherever you want but again you can come back and change them if you need to uh, different holes will have different amounts of points so what we have here then you start out with this ship and you can check it out like this over here you've got um, different frames so you can actually upgrade um, and they have all different, you can have a look down here so they come with better armor and more assembly points which allows you to uh, fit more stuff onto them so if you want to look at what it looks like you can drag this over um, you can just click OK uh, and check it out and you can see the new hull um, it tells you up here it's going to cost 1.7 million and my current ship is worth about 440,000 and if you want to proceed with this and, and purchase it or any of the changes you just click this button down here trade and build and if you don't want to you just click cancel and exit you can also uh, change the engines and um, click down here to the wings 
So you can choose different wings, you can drag them over. See what they look like. Which is which is what's also pretty cool is if you select down here say wings, you can actually position them. So you can use these sliders here to um let's center that. And then so you could kind of like move it back to the back more and create your own. You can actually scale them as well as far as I know. So you could like make it nice and big if you wanted. And so you can create your own ship like that. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of customization there. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to cancel from this. I'm not going to make any changes. I don't want to spend any money. I don't have enough to get the ship upgrades I really want yet anyway. So yeah, let's go um, do this contract. So we're going to uh, launch ship. Oh yeah, you can also refuel here at the stations. So if I just click navigation. Sorry, i uh, got to click launch ship here. Um, down the bottom sure, here. You can see that I have uh, 498 fuel, which is pretty much full. And uh, this can, has a capacity of 500. Um, again, you can add more fuel tanks in your configuration to um, hold more fuel to go travel further without refueling. And the good thing about that is this particular station that I'm at it costs 52 unit uh, per fuel, or 52 per unit fuel, which is pretty good, but once you start flying around to different sectors and quadrants and um, the prices can go up to 100 and something 150 per fuel so it makes sense to try and uh, buy your fuel and refuel at the stations that uh, don't charge as much um, so with a bigger tank you can afford to say fly long distances and then come back and buy the cheaper fuel and you just have to explore and um, see what um, places are best for that so it's good it's pretty good like that what else we got we got um the navigation system so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna launch out here now um let's get out of the station so we we'll just pick a bay and fly out we can increase our speed I'm not going to go too much into the controls and the um, different settings and things because there is a lot um, to it. So I might go into some of them but not all of them because the flight controls there is a lot to it. So okay, um, when we accepted that contract um, it created a waypoint for us. So all we got to do now, if you look at the radar down the bottom. Um, here, uh, you can see the yellow symbol, that's our waypoint. So we have to turn the ship towards that waypoint. Actually, you don't even have to turn towards it, um, but it, you know, it's just habit. Um, lens flare from the sun. You have a low light um, system, if you press F11, you can, uh, it kind of dims the bright lights in your view, and also if you're in the dark on the side of a planet, you can actually press F11 to give you kind of night vision. So, it's pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to engage our jump drive, which is F8, and we're going to jump to this waypoint. 619k away, so it will take a while and a lot of fuel to fly there manually. So with the jump drive, we get there pretty much in an instant. Here we are at our solar array. So this is one of the quests. Oh, don't fly into it. If you fly into it, you will explode. Which is what I've done a few times. Which is a bit annoying because... Well, if you fly into asteroids or solar panels or anything at high speed, I think you know, you're going to explode, so just be careful about your speed when you're approaching these things. Have a look outside your ship. Oh uh, well, there you go. Demonstration. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to click on restore last save point. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. You know, don't fly into stuff. Ok, 
Okay, back to where we were. Uh, we're gonna have to accept. I think we're gonna have to accept that mission again. So, click accept. And let's fly out of here again. Engage our fulcrum drive and fly towards that waypoint. Okay, so you can see our speed on the screen is 2792. You want to kind of approach this at about a thousand or less when you get close to it. I'm going to kind of bring it in safer this time, a bit more cautiously. Alright, brakes, 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 brakes. Ah, okay, we survived. Okay, I'm kind of flying a little quickly and a little recklessly because uh, of the video I'm trying to, you know, I'm too slow down it. Okay, so then what you do is you engage your um, mining beam. And that basically cleans all the dust off the solar array. And you go over it. Basically you have to clean the whole array. And that will give you 8,000 credits and you do it. I'm not actually going to complete the whole thing. It's going to take a little while to do that. Uh, but it's just to show you what one of the quests is like. Um, it, as I said, it's an easy quest. As long as you don't fly into the thing at speed. Um, some of the more difficult quests will actually involve battles and things like that. So, let's have a look at our navigation. I'm not going to complete that, as I said, it'll just take too long. Uh, this is your navigation uh, system. You can zoom in and out. These are all different um, sectors. And it's quite a massive area that you can explore. Apparently there's hidden things. Uh, there could be hidden things out in these areas which I haven't even gotten to look at. Uh, you can set a waypoint to where you want to go just by left clicking on it. Um, you can look at the quadrant view. If you click on quadrant view, you can uh, check out the different quadrants. Like if I right click on Virgo here, it'll show me what Virgo looks like. And uh, there's these purple things here. These are jump gates. So it allows you to travel from one quadrant to the other. And it's massive. So if you look at um, each one of these quadrants, when you look into it, it's going to have all of these sectors to explore. Now most of the uh, interesting stuff is near the center of each sector. Um, and you can um, fly anywhere you want. Um, but these jump gates will bring you from quadrant to quadrant really quickly. Uh, and that's what they are. As well as that, you've got... Um, you can trade with other ships. You can build... Um, actually you can build your own stations and different uh, probes and stuff for mining um, let's see if we can get ourselves into a battle here so we're gonna go to we are going to go to let me see I'm gonna fly to this Virgo here so I'll right click on that to create a waypoint and if you just click autopilot the ship will travel there itself Oh, I failed the contract because we flew out, out of the sector that we were um, supposed to complete that in. And this is actually a jump gate. And this will bring us from one quadrant to the other really quickly. So, let's go through here. Let's go turn off the aut autopilot. So we can manually fly through here. Another thing you can do is actually you can land on planets. So let's actually do that as well. Um, go to our navigation console. This is the planet. This is a city on the planet. So if I right click on that, 
I wouldn't recommend doing that and jumping to it because you're going to crash into the planet and die. So the best thing to do is just create a waypoint away from the planet like that. And press F8 to jump there. Uh, this should bring us hopefully close to the planet without getting us killed. Here we are. And we can fly. The brilliant thing about this game is um, you can just fly straight from space down to the planet. It's completely seamless. You gotta watch your speed though, so I'm just gonna slow my speed down. Make sure you keep it below uh, 2000 or something like that. Um, there's missions and things to do. There's, I find out after playing it for a while, there's not a lot of incentive to actually go down to a planet. Um, because you can make a lot of money and it takes a long time to go down to the planet so it nearly seems quicker just to stay in space and go from station to station doing quests and making money that way um, I don't know, I just think um, the planets you know there needs to be more more something in, more interesting going on to actually want to bring you down here um, maybe I'm missing something as I said I'm not having a you can actually look around your cockpit as well, which is brilliant. I think if you change your ship frame, the cockpit changes too, which again, that's another brilliant thing. So, you want to shoot your weapons, you got a... You can change, you can shoot your beam weapons. Or you can shoot just your practical weapons. Or you can fire both at the same time. Okay, so let's descend on this planet. So I'm going to pick up speed a little bit more. <coughs> so, yeah, you got to keep velocity below 3000. So we can actually go a little bit quicker. Go 2500 or so. 2600. 27. And you can dock at these um, stations on the ground as well. And you can get quests and um, purchase items and stuff like that. I haven't really docked at many planet stations. So I'm not sure if there's an advantage maybe to what they um, sell. That's the docking symbol or route, route that you take. Pretty um, very cool. So yeah, the planet, planets and the terrain, um, the graphics are good. I like um, the, t the planet types are diverse from what I've seen in screenshots. So you can have like this kind of looks like a kind of a grey planet, but there's also like uh, green planets, um, icy planets, fiery lava planets. You know, really can be very interesting to have a look. But as I said, there doesn't seem to be a lot of incentive to actually go down to planets and, you know, do stuff. I think what might be cool is if there was some kind of um, battle that took place on the ground. Maybe some sort of tanks or something, some sort of invasion was happening and you could fly down and help them out. Uh, that would be really fun, shooting some ground units from your uh, spaceship and stuff like that. Um, or maybe a mission to take out an enemy installation, uh, kind of stuff like that, like attack missions would be good. But uh, let's stock here then. And yeah, I didn't really get into any um, fights or combat missions in this, but uh, gives you an idea what the game's like. I would definitely recommend it. It's a really good space game. And it isn't. It doesn't even cost a lot. It's good value as well. So let's uh, dock here. We're going to dock. Oh, that was a rough landing. Okay. 
again I'm kind of rushing a little bit I'm not really taking my time but yeah so you're back at the station you can see you can buy your different things here like food um, if you wanted you can create a ship that has like 10 cargo bays or something like that and just like do cargo runs or you can buy um, a military grade ship and just concentrate on um, battles and fighting um, but yeah brilliant game uh, check it out if you're into space sims uh, it takes a bit of getting into but there's a lot a lot there uh, and it's enjoyable so yep thank you for watching goodbye